I'm Kevin O'Flaherty. I hope you enjoyed this Learn About Law video and podcast presented by O'Flaherty Law. If you need some help, please feel free to give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several locations for your convenience. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Hi, this is Andrew with Learn About Law, and in today's video, we'll discuss why reviewing your estate plan now is a very good idea. So the coronavirus is not an illness to be dismissed. Between its aggressive transmission, higher rate of contagiousness, and a higher risk for serious illness or death, for those above 40, <clears throat> we must prepare ourselves for the worst case scenario. Furthermore, many coronavirus style viruses are seasonal, and while we all hope to be out of the woods come summertime, the possibility of a surge of infections, serious illnesses, and death in the winter and fall at worst is very likely and at best unpredictable. Whether it's in a few weeks, a few months, or a year, we will begin leaving our houses, returning to restaurants, sporting events, and busy vacation uh, sports, and the risk of the coronavirus will likely still be there. But we can hold on to some certainty knowing that if we end up being the unlucky ones, at least we took the extra step of getting our assets in order and reviewing our estate plan. Um, when was the last time you reviewed your estate plan actually, uh, or your will and testament, right? Is it up to date? Have there been any major changes regarding the birth certificate? Do you even have a last will and testament? Without a will or trust, your estate will be subject to a lengthy probate process, possibly holding up much needed funds or transfer of property during a very uncertain time. Maybe you're thinking about just writing down everything on a piece of paper and putting it in a sealed envelope. Well, unfortunately, Illinois does not really recognize holographic wills. A holographic will is one handwritten or typed by the decedent, that's the deceased owner of the will, but not witnessed by two or more individuals. Even if the will is prepared with the help of an attorney, if it is not signed and notarized with at least two witnesses, it will be invalid in the state of Illinois. Iowa probate law follows the same rules and does not accept oral or holographic wills. Illinois or Iowa uh, revocable living trusts, something you want to look at too. There is cause for both younger, older, and everyone in between to review their revocable living trust at this time. Beyond the potential of falling ill with COVID-19 due to the coronavirus, if your life has changed in a major way such as having a child or additional children, or if you're older and your beneficiaries have changed for whatever reason, it's important to update your living trust. Um, you wanna think about if you designated an alternate trustee in the case of the primary trustee becomes ill or dies and cannot distribute your assets, or you wanna think, did you fund your revocable living trust at all? It is not enough in the state of Illinois or Iowa to simply draft the trust and have the proper signatures, although getting that far is very important and gives you a lot of protection. The trust must be funded with whatever property and assets over a certain amount that will be transferred upon the trustee's deaths. Being funded basically means having proper language indicating the transfer of property and assets to the trust and notifying the appropriate financial institutions of the transfer. You need to review your durable power of attorney. A durable power of attorney is an important part of your overall estate plan especially if you own a business. Should you become incapacitated due to the coronavirus, the durable power of attorney designates an agent to make financial decisions in your place. Having this document in your estate plan is also important if you're an elderly person who requires day-to-day -day assistance. Um, another question to ask yourself is, do you have a healthcare surrogate? Usually this person is your family member or spouse. This person makes medical decisions regarding your health should you be unable to, uh, to do so due to illness. Also, there's medical power of attorney for minor child or a single parent. Um, or do both parents, you know, if you think of do both parents work in high-risk jobs, even if the answer to the question is still no, it's still important to have someone who can take care of your child uh, to the doctor and make medical decisions for him or her. Beyond being too ill or physically to take your child to the doctor, testing positive for the coronavirus and being quarantined may leave you with no one else who has the authority to legally take your child to the doctor and make medical decisions. Lastly, unless you really don't like the idea of being on a ventilator, um, make sure your living will has the proper language in the event you need an emergency life-saving procedure. 
As always, thank you for tuning in. Hi, Kevin O'Flaherty again from O'Flaherty Law. Hope you enjoyed our presentation of Learn About Law. If you need some help, please feel free to give us a call at 630-324-6666. That's 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. If you found this helpful, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizurebusiness.com. And visit Making Real Estate Fun for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.